Hello friends. I am really glad to be talking to you once again after a long gap. I think we last met in November and now we are in a new year. So let me first of all wish you all a very wonderful and happy new year. I hope all of you are doing fine uh, health wise and also with respect to your studies and classes. Um, so the reason why I am recording this uh, video is to go back to our portions and cover a few chapters that were left out uh, in our previous um, sessions. So today we will be looking at one of these chapters called In the Flood. It is a very interesting short story by Tagari Shivashangara Pilla. I, I have already shared the text of the story and also its original in Malayalam in our WhatsApp uh, group. If you haven't read the story, please uh, do read it. Uh, read the English version and also the Malayalam version. It's really interesting and it is a very short story. You can easily read it in 15 minutes. So I, I urge you to go to the group and find the story and uh, you know go through it and then you can listen to this lecture. So now let us, uh, let us quickly begin this class by looking at the biographical details of Tagadi Shivashangara Pilla, who is a really uh, familiar name for each and every one of us because of his, uh, because of his importance in Malayalam literature. So in your lesson itself, there is a very brief biographical note. It uh, gives us the particulars of his life. Let us quickly read through it and then we will move on to the chapter. So Tagadi Shivashagra Pilla was born in the village of Tagadi in Kutanad in the south, south of Kerala. His novels Tautiyuda Magan and Randi Dangari proved path-breaking as they used the social realist mode effectively to focus attention on the nature of the conflicts in a society where the depressed sections were becoming politically assertive. The novel Chenmin, a complex love story against the background of the life of fisher folk, has won him universal acclaim. His magnum opus is Kair, an epic novel which traces the evolution of the central Travancore society from the early 19th century to the mid 20th century. Tagari Shivashankara Pilla has won the Sahitya Academy Award in 1957 the Nyanapit Award in 1984, besides several other honours like Padma Bhushan in 1985. He passed away in 1999. So this is about his life. So from this uh, introduction, what you have to understand is basically um, a couple of things. It is about the kind of fiction that he wrote. It is described as social realist. So what do you mean by social realism? It means depicting the reality of society in a way that is very close to life itself. So what Thakari did in his works is he gave us a picture of society as it really existed during those times. So he was writing mainly about the mid uh, 20th century, the 1950s and the 60s. And during that time, you know, uh, just after India gained independence, uh, Kerala was still a very agrarian society where people had to labor physically in order to uh, in order to produce uh, their daily food. And his stories mostly talk about these working classes, about fisher fisher folk, uh, about farmers, about people who do manual labor like scavenging and we also find that most of his stories are focused on um, you know the the depressed classes the untouchables uh, people who were uh, discriminated against by uh, various other powerful sections of the society economically and also uh, caste wise so uh, you know in this particular story also uh, we the main, the human character uh, 
uh, who is at the you know who is present in the story uh, is an untouchable and uh, the story is about how this man he is left alone in this house uh, with his wife his four children uh, and his pets a cat and a dog and uh, he is trapped in the house because it is surrounded by flood waters the reason why he is in this house is because his master the yajamanan you know the the landlord the janmi uh, they have already left for a safe place when the water starts to uh, increase when the flood begins and he is left to guard the 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 land of the janmi right he has to make sure that the uh, the plantain the banana and all the other uh, crops they are not stolen by others so he is actually risking his life in order to protect the property of his master and uh, this same relationship between the master and the servant you know that is once again present in the story in the relationship between the dog and uh, you know uh, uh, the main character uh, uh, so what we find is that just like the master interested uh, you know uh, uh, chenan to uh, to look after his house chenan interested or chenan is giving the safety of his house to the dog while he is uh, you know while he escapes from the flood waters uh, and the dog we you know uh, eventually what happens in the story is uh, while everyone escapes the dog him is the only creature who is left in this house while the waters are slowly increasing and uh, ultimately the dog uh, you know encounters uh, a crocodile and uh, loses its life so in in a certain way although it is not a human tragedy uh, this is a tragic story in which uh, you know the dog who is the principal you know the uh, you know the, the focus of the story ultimately does not survive yeah. so uh, let us go to the story uh, i i am sure that you have read the story uh, already so i am not going to go through the story very uh, deeply uh, but i am going to summarize what is happening as we you know move through the story so the story begins in the middle of a flood right it it does not give us uh the beginning of the flood it is already you know it is already in an advanced state when we start reading the story so we already understand that the you know most of the village in which this story is set is already under water the only uh, structure the only building which is at least partially safe is the temple and uh, even in the tem temple the idol the the god the god's idol is partly submerged but uh, at the at the top part of this temple there is a you know there are rooms where the villagers uh, you know villagers are safe from the rising waters so these rooms are described uh, in the first paragraph of this story and it says that although there were a lot of people 356 people uh, dogs cats uh, you know children all of these people were uh, packed into the small room at the top of the temple but there were no quarrels right so uh, you know it is like when danger uh, is being you know present or when human beings are facing dangers they are willing to overcome enemies you know natural enemies like uh, dogs and cats uh, they they will learn to live together when faced with a situation where survival is at stake so the same thing is happening here but away from this temple in a small hut in a small uh, you know small house made of uh, you know mud we have uh, chenam parayan and this chenam parayan is uh, you know he is interested with guarding the the house of his master and the farmlands and he uh, you know he had already prepared for the flood when the flood began he prepared a 
a loft, you know, a kind of an attic in his house, which he loaded with uh, food and uh, water and all those things to remain safe from the flood. But unfortunately, he did not estimate the, you know, the, the length of the flood and slowly he finds that he is running out of, uh, you know, running out of space because the water is going on rising. There is no sign that the water is going to come down. So um, we find this, uh, this character in a really precarious uh, position. So he, he is looking out for some way to escape and uh, uh, very luckily he finds a small catamaran which is a small boat coming uh, towards him and he calls the uh, you know the owner of this uh, boat and uh, uh, they come and they rescue the family all the four children uh, his wife and chendan himself they all get onto the boat and they slowly move away from the house even the cat uh, gets into the boat but unfortunately uh, the dog who was uh, you know who was somewhere else in the house uh, they forgot to uh, take the dog along with them so the dog is abandoned right just like chenan's master abandoned him to look after the house chenan also knowingly or unknowingly uh, left the dog behind and uh, went away so the dog is now alone and he is feeling anxiety he is uh, you know he he looks at the uh, the departure of his master and he does not know what to do now and he also finds uh, several other creatures like frogs who are there um, you know in the house and uh, you know frogs are you know they, they don't mind the flood they can easily adapt to the flood and it is not a problem for them but for the dog there is no uh, you know there is no uh, way to escape from this catastrophe So the rest of the story, uh, as we go through the story, it is about how this dog spends his time alone in this house. So he spends uh, uh, a lot of time exploring various uh, parts of the house, um, you know, and uh, slowly we see how the dog suffers from hunger, how um, it, it, it doesn't have any, any foot left in the house and being surrounded by water on all sides, there is no way that uh, he can escape. What is also interesting is that other people notice the presence of the dog in this house, and uh, they, you know, they all uh, talk among themselves. Look, a dog has been left alone in this house, uh, but unfortunately, they are also trapped. Right? It is just like. Uh, when during the you know the the quarantine times we were all stuck in our houses without being able to venture outside so a flood is also a similar kind of a situation it is a time of isolation it is a time when we are unable to reach out to our fellow humans uh, when the humanity that is you know that is the essence of our ourselves is somewhat powerless Right. We cannot go out and help others during this catastrophe. And the others uh, who hear the, the cry of the dog, uh, to their ears, this cry al almost becomes like a human voice. So as the story progresses, we find this dog becoming more of a human being rather than just an animal. We as readers, you know, we feel uh, this growing sympathy for this animal. You know, as we, you know, as we have, I'm sure that uh, in the other lessons that we studied in ecology, this section, it also focuses on how we have to find, uh, you know, um, a kind of, what do you say, a kind of friendship with animals, a kind of equality with animals. You know, this sort of a 
uh, feeling of superiority that human beings have it is not really justified because after all human beings are just you know another form of animal life although we consider ourselves to be intelligent and uh, you know self aware uh, you know these are only these are things which uh, which did not uh, you know these are not things which are uh, uniquely human there is evidence to suggest that animals too are self aware there is animal intelligence as well it is only a difference in degree human beings may be more intelligent or more self aware than most animals but that doesn't mean that human beings somehow are entirely different or categorically different from animals okay so the dog uh, in his isolation um you know there is a scene uh, which is being described in this paragraph here about how this dog eagerly listens to you know the the sound of ramayana being recited from some other uh, roof or i mean uh, some other house in the flood and it it is it seems as if this uh, the recite recitation of this scripture or uh, you know about finding uh, solace in religion in god that is able to provide some sort of comfort even to this animal so um, it is a way of uh, you know takari telling us that this animal is you know almost uh, similar to a human being in that he can find some sort of comfort some sort of uh, you know mental um, you know what do you say uh, a relief in listening to uh, you know the human beings chanting ramayana see uh, it is described here how the uh, now once again the dog remained silent a little longer this time to listen to the mellifluous chant of the ramayana mellifluous means melodious right sweet um, so it is as if you know the dog is listening that is how it is being described so um again in the morning the dog is uh, once again alone on the roof and the dog starts howling or crying and it is described as the notes of a raga fit to melt the hearts of the listeners it is now like the dog is like a, a lonely singer who's who is singing a very sad song which is able to melt the the heart of the people who are listening to him and look at all the the kinds of you know the kinds of uh, suffering that the dog has to undergo uh, hunger is there a weakness uh, the cold of the night being surrounded by water it is very cold and also there are fleas on his body which is irritating him constantly and uh, then uh, you know during this time a couple of incidents happen uh, one is that occasionally the uh, the dead body of some animal would float on the flood water and come to the house and uh, another thing is um, you know crocodiles would glide through the water and pass by the house and both of these things are seen by the dog and the dog is able to distinguish the dog understands that the crocodile is a danger and the dead body of a uh, you know of uh, an animal which is floating might be a source of food so there is a very definite uh, intelligence in this animal he is able to distinguish between an opportunity and a danger right and then uh, people also come by occasionally um and whenever you know whenever somebody comes uh, the dog would you know the dog would try to uh, uh, you know uh, 
win the friendship of that man wagging wagging his tail trying to catch the attention of that man so that he might be rescued so the dog knows that the only way uh, he can escape from this uh, roof is by the help of some human being okay but at the same time the dog also realizes that some human beings at least may not be here for good reasons for example uh, later on we'll see how uh, another boat comes along and what they do is they steal all the the plantain uh, all the banana uh, from the the trees around uh, surrounding the house uh, these are the trees that uh, chenan had been asked to protect the banana uh, trees and uh, uh, the dog attacks these these uh, thieves who come there and he even bites one of them and here if you look at the last part of this uh, page here the cry of the dog is described as ayo right so ayo is an exclamation of despair right you know we uh, it is a uh, is an expression of sadness and despair and anger and it is a very human thing it is it is some it's a word that all malayalis will equally recognize and uh, Agari is saying that the cry of the dog has now, uh, you know, it is almost like the dog is saying "ayo," right? That he is uh, alone in this house. So there is no end to the suffering. right um night after night uh, the rain continues the water levels rise so you know this experience of the flood is also something which is very poignantly or powerfully described in this uh, short story uh, all of us uh, you know have very fresh memories of the flood that happened in 2018 and 2019 and i'm sure that at least uh, some of you had uh, first hand knowledge or first hand experience of the flood you might have been uh, trapped in your houses or at least you know some of your relatives may have been uh, through some uh, scary experience during the flood of 2018 so uh, we we uh, we have that knowledge with which to evaluate and compare uh tagri's narrative and we find that narrative uh, tagri is very accurate in describing the flood uh, this flood is not very violent as in you know it is not a very powerful flow of water like a tsunami or anything it is just a gradual you know rising of the water level right and in in a certain sense it is even more uh scary even more frightening than a tsunami because um at least in a tsunami you know death is instantaneous you, know, you understand the danger and you uh, you know you know that um, either you will escape or you know you will die instantly but here it is a prolonged suffering and it is also uh, even after the flood um, recedes even after uh, after the the flood recedes uh, the danger of infection the danger of disease will continue to uh, you know uh, affect uh, society so um um what i wanted to say is uh, you know the difference between our flood our experience of the flood and tagri's experience of the flood is that when we experienced the flood in 2018 it was a much more connected or a social experience you know we were constantly connected to each other through technology right like we could we could constantly talk with others who were experiencing the flood we could talk to the the rescue workers we could talk to the government we could talk to the uh, the the soldiers the fisher folk but there uh, there are there are any number of uh, connectivity options which are available for uh, people who are stuck in some place but in um, you know in tagri story the main difference is 
the isolation which is felt by this particular animal and all others also right the the only communication possible is by shouting you can shout from one house and you can be heard in the next house but other than that it is total isolation right it is as if the entire world has been swallowed by water and you are the only person left that is the sort of experience that uh, these people uh, who went through such situations in you know before technology um, communication technology had to undergo and that is very effectively conveyed by tagari right and thus when we come to the final part of the story you know the the end of the story is very sudden right the dog is almost uh, you know almost at the point of death and uh, at this time um, he finds a big uh, you know dead body of a cow which washes up near the house and uh, because of the hunger that he has been suffering from all these days he does not consider the danger of going and eating or trying to get some flesh from this dead body so he approaches the cow and immediately at that time a crocodile swims uh, you know swims up to the dog and uh, you know bites him in one single powerful bite you know the dog is captured by the crocodile and uh, taken under water so the suddenness of the dog's death you know um which uh, takari describes just by the sound of the bite of the crocodile you know it reminds us of how nature is you know nature is full of dangers right death can be instantaneous right eventually through technology and other uh, you know other things we human beings we have somehow isolated ourselves from all these dangers of nature but tagari is telling us that all these dangers they are not far away it takes very little to put us in the in the you know in the vicinity of death and uh, the crocodile which catches this dog is uh, you know is a symbol of that inherent danger which is always present in nature that inherent means something which is unavoidable something which is a feature of or a characteristic of nature and finally we see after the you know after the disappearance of the dog everything disappears right the house itself as the flood waters go on rising the house crumbles and disappears under the water so tagari is trying to tell us that nothing is permanent of course life is not permanent because life is something which is very limited right after the you know after the appointed life span every every creature human or animal they have to they have to die but even the things that we suppose are permanent like buildings when we compare the the life span of these things with the processes of nature we find that even buildings are mortal even they will crumble and disappear and that is what happens to chandan's uh, house uh, it also you know it also disappears and finally after many days when the flood waters uh, subside uh, recede chandan comes back and uh, he is looking for his dog so that is you know that is uh, some sort of positive thing that we can find in uh, you know in uh, this the story is actually it is a tragic story but there is a positive element in that the first thing that chandan looks for when he comes back is not his house or his master's banana uh, trees or whatever it is his dog and he finds the the dead body of this dog uh, under a coconut tree 
gently swayed by the ripples right the the waves are gently swaying this uh, dead dog's body almost as if it is uh, you know uh, slowly uh, caressing the dog to sleep you know when you have a baby we you know we rock the baby to sleep so like that the way this that body of the dog is described it is as if tagri has finally given uh, peaceful rest to this poor creature throughout the story he has been suffering but now at least he will rest in peace right so chedan comes and uh, he examines the dog but he is not sure whether it is his dog because hundreds of animals might have died during this flood and uh, because the decomposition of the body uh, he is not able to recognize the color of the dog right the skin has decomposed and uh, it is just a you know a, a blotted uh, corpse of a dog and one ear had been bitten off that is probably you know bitten off by the crocodile who caught the dog so that final uh, description of the dead body of the dog it is also you know it is also um, it can also be interpreted or understood as a reference to how death is a great leveler in life you may have various identification features you may have various um, classes caste religion identities uh, you know names but once death happens you know um, one dead body is just like any other dead body right it is lifeless there is no point in uh, attaching you know identity or uh, prestige uh, to uh, to a person who is you know uh, to a dead body right a body is simply a vessel from which life has uh, has been emptied i'm not suggesting that we have to disrespect dead bodies or that you know people need to be treated with the respect but um the point which probably uh, is uh, you know is being made by tagadi is that uh, death removes all these barriers which keep people from uh, you know from uh, becoming closer right and uh, the unidentifiable dead body of a dog which is seen at the end of the story uh, it is a reminder of how we are all at, at the level of death at the level of just being a, a living being we are all interconnected the entire ecosystem is an interconnected network so i i hope uh, you have gotten at least uh, a few of the interesting points or ideas which we can uh, understand from the story do go through the story it is really easy to understand the story because the malayalam version is available and we can easily and directly understand the malayalam version it is a very direct translation uh, uh, so you know the the translator has tried to capture uh, each and every sentence uh in the original um so we can directly sentence by sentence we can look at the original and if you have doubts about the meaning we can you know we can just refer to the malayalam and clear it up if you still are not able to understand something in the story you can always message me on whatsapp and i'll be happy to help you out so if you have any uh, doubts or concerns with this story do let me know and uh, we have two more lessons i think um, um a new kind of perspective the lesson called a new kind of perspective that will be taken by tom sir and uh, i will uh, i will come back with uh, one more uh, video lecture on uh, earth's carrying capacity which is an essay uh, on you know on human population how human population is affecting the earth so we will read that essay next uh, so all the best uh, for your exams do read all your texts very thoroughly because uh, questions can uh, can be very 
uh, you know, uh, it can come from any part of the text. So it is very important that you read the text thoroughly and uh, clear your doubts individually with your teachers before the exam itself. Okay. So thank you. I will see you in the next class. Have a wonderful uh, new year and uh, hope to see you uh, very soon. Thank you.